In the mid-1950s, British Rail had plans to replace steam locomotion with diesel. The problem is they didn't have an army of diesel locomotives with which to accomplish this. They didn't have anything to replace what was already doing the work. They had to start that from scratch. But they had a very clever way of doing it in the 50s. They decided to commission prototypes rather than order a batch of 100 locos and find out that suddenly they had a terrible design flaw. And they divided it into power brackets. Type 1 were the lowest power bracket and that's what we're talking about today. This would have been uh, the kind of train that would pull local freight trains. Small scale freight, the kind that you would see on a branch line for example. And the idea of having all these prototypes to choose from in small batches of maybe 10 or 20 was brilliant because it showed up any engineering problems that the machines would have, it showed any problems that they might have in terms of being expensive to run or whether they were cheap to run, whether they would have problems negotiating points or curves and it allowed them to pick the best loco for the job. There were three contenders for the big contract. English Electric submitted the design that later became designated the Class 20. British Thomson Houston put forth the Class 15. And the North British Locomotive Company delivered the Class 16. The three designs shared the basic idea of the American switching locomotive, namely a long bonnet containing the power plant, buggy driving wheels and a cab either at one end or somewhere along the loco offset from the centre. Of the contenders, the 16 proved unreliable, suffering problems with ventilation for the Paxman engine, which caused breakdowns on a regular basis. It also had a non-standard control system, which made it impossible to link up to other locos for multiple running. The Class 15 fared somewhat better, with a small batch of extra locos being ordered, though they too suffered reliability problems from their power plant, and the off-centre cab meant poor visibility no matter which direction the train was being run. Of the three contenders, the English electric model, the one we would later come to know as the Class 20, was far and away the most successful. It was reliable, it was powerful, and it had the advantage of having its cab all the way at one end, which, whilst it had limited visibility looking forward, had brilliant visibility if it was going in reverse. And the English Electric, at this point, were becoming quite adept at building diesel electric locomotives, and it shows in the build quality and the design of it. The homegrown power plant that English Electric built for this was far and away the most reliable of all of the options that were being presented. And it was also the most powerful, clocking in at the full thousand horsepower, the maximum that the Type 1 level was actually specified to. So it should have been, easily, the one British Rail picked as its standard Type 1. However, whilst British Rail had had the brilliant idea to audition designs, a few years and a management change later, they instead reversed this trend and had a really stupid idea. It could be argued that this idea was brought on by high ups panicking that they weren't going to meet their goal of eradicating steam by 1968, or it could simply be that somebody high up knew somebody else in another company who wanted to sell them lots of locomotives. However, whatever the reason, instead of the obvious choice of picking the English electric design, they picked a fourth option, one that hadn't even built a prototype yet, by a company who'd never built a locomotive before. And they ordered 117 of them. These were the Class 17s from the Clayton Equipment Company which became legendary for being the most unreliable diesel locomotives ever built for British Rail, even surpassing the old Metropolitan Vickers Burko locomotives. They had an average availability of only 60%. In other words, almost half of these locos at any given time were out of order with failures. British Rail came back to English Electric, cap in hand after the debacle of the Class 17s. They ordered a hundred of them and then they ordered a hundred more a few years later, making this the standard Type 1 locomotive on British railways. Over their life, the Class 20s gained the nickname of Choppers amongst enthusiasts, because from a distance their engine sounds somewhat like a helicopter. They were mostly used for small-scale local freight runs at first and moving empty coaching stock from one place to another. 
But in the 1960s and 70s, a lot more local freight was being moved by road, and most of the trucks and the coaches were arranged into fixed rakes. Luckily, having been designed from the start to operate in tandem, most Class 20s were formed into pairs, joined nose to nose, and pulled heavier goods trains, such as the merry-go-round coal trains. In the 21st century, nearly 60 years after they were first introduced, Class 20s are still active on the main line today. There are 17 of them still in active service with various independent rail contractors and a further 22 of them in preservation, like this one, which lives here at the Wensleydale Railway in North Yorkshire. The Class 20s formed the backbone of British Rail's light freight work throughout most of its existence. There were other Type 1 locomotives, but none of them mattered. This was the one that mattered. The 15s and the 16s were withdrawn because of poor reliability, and the Class 14s were withdrawn simply because, well, they were superseded and out of date the moment they turned up in the mid-60s, leaving this one alone. Except it wasn't really alone. Because of English Electric's brilliant foresight in a, in, from the start enabling them to be run in pairs, allowing them to become a single more powerful locomotive, they spent most of their lives coupled up to a partner and been run in tandem so that they could pull bigger and heavier trains. And this extended their life all the way through to now. And that's pretty impressive for an engine that was conceived in the 1950s. The Class 20 Innovative, powerful, reliable, and another success for English Electric.